part of the swarm action tonight. And we're going to have a little bit more over here. Sporting in the top right hand corner as the teal Protoss player, ladies and gentlemen, representing our Nexus Gaming, we have Verdi. And he is going to be going up against his opponent. The red Terran player in the bottom left had corner winning the Intel Extreme Masters Singapore with his trademark two rack style. I had the pleasure of casting that. Am I going to be casting a little bit more of that in this best of three series? It is, of course, Western Wolves Sting. And at some point in the near future, Nick is going to realize that Verdi doesn't actually play Zerg. That will be a fun moment. And if he does play Zerg, though, he is doing the most incredible mind game ever right now. And he is disguising his Zerg buildings very effectively, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't like Zerg anymore, and I'm just going to play Protoss. But no, indeed, he is a Protoss player. So what can we expect from these two? It's PVT. For a start, Mothership cores allow you to be a bit more aggressive. You can go for some base tradey situations because you can just mass recall back. You can take a bit of a greedier expansion, and just generally speaking, you can have more fun. For Terran though, they can do lots of fancy shenanigans. Of course, that boost on Medivax allows you to get drops in and out. Hellbats, Widow Mines, one-shotting Zealots and Stalkers. I'm really, really hoping that we see some Widow Mine action. Yeah, there are a wide variety of early game pressures that Terran could do in Heart of the Swamp. And more importantly, Maddles, I think Sting is known for doing early game pressure. He loves his early aggression. So. I would not be surprised to see that at all if we were going to pick a player all night tonight who's willing to use the entire Heart of the Swarm Terran arsenal to terrorize his opponents at every single turn. I think that Sting would be the one. I mean, of course, we do have Heart in the bracket as well. Or iPad, as everyone in the chat has been affectionately calling him, because that is his in-game name. So maybe we could see a TBT Finals here. Who knows? That would be pretty intense, and TVT in Heart of the Swarm is a great matchup, but for the time being we're seeing a Reaper opening out of Sting, so he's going to be utilizing the large amount of cliff area around Verdi's base to get some scouting information, potentially do a little bit of damage, but due to the fact that we do have a Stalker already on its way out, it should be able to be held off quite comfortably. So. What we're really hoping for is a good mid-game position, and considering the fact that Sting is going for his command center now, we should get a bit more of a macro game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so, we haven't really seen too much aggression come out of Sting so far. I wonder if that's because he's switching up his style in Heart of the Swarm, or if it's because he's maybe playing against opponents that he isn't otherwise used to in this cup. Obviously, he needs to make sure he gets to those finals to have a guaranteed spot. Uh, at I-48, that's going to come in very handy for him indeed, as a Reaper attempts to do some tickle damage against some probes here. But the Mothership Core popping out now is going to say an absolute no to that. He does get a full scout there. So, with the scouting information, knowing what your opponent's doing, you can really prepare your build appropriately, you can adjust your play as you'd need, and Sting, with Sting coming out, is just really the standard of standard, getting those two additional barracks, and as such, we're not going to have anything too dramatic happening for the near future, but obviously what I'm waiting to see is what Verdi chooses to do in the mid-game. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, Verdi has a decent number of options available to him. The Mothership Core, of course, allows him to be that much more versatile in both attack and defense. Right now, he's just going up to a second gateway as Sting is going to go a very bio-heavy style quickly, which is not very surprising against Protoss. Immediately going for that reactor on the second racks, and no doubt we'll see an add-on on the third as well. Engineering Bay already researching plus one. So Verdi, meanwhile, is getting, well, as you said, getting everything out, getting everything ready. Stim plus one on its way, and this is now... The key thing I'm noticing is actually that Sting has second orbital command down quite yet, just floating it now. So that did give Verdi a small period where he was ahead on bases. He is slightly ahead on the work count by six. And as such, he can he can just try and capitalize on that, keep building it up as best he can. But these two, they can't be passive all game. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, 
this is interesting because at least from Sting's point of view, I'm not used to him sitting back and relaxing, but you're right. I mean, right now, they're just kind of making sure they know what one another is doing. Birdie hasn't really scouted all game, so I love the hallucinated Phoenix play. We'll spot the Reaper at the Watchtower, but of course they can't shoot each other, so no big deal there. And he's going to try and get a full scout off into the main, but Marines are positioned to try and stop the hallucination before it gets in, and oh! He should have got that third one off, but perhaps a little bit over micro, and as a result, Verdi, at the very least, sees all the barracks and the factory popping up, and I, as well as the engineering bay as well, so that basically is a full scout, but it came so close to not scouting anything at all. That was just a good scout off. I mean, as you quite rightly said, it was so nearly not, but... Just getting to see that is going to make Verdi a bit more comfortable because he knows what should be there. He saw all the Marines and now we actually see Sting moving across the map and there's no watchtower control at all for Verdi at the moment. He does have his observer moving forward. We'll spot this now, but will it be soon? And does he actually see it? I don't think he does. He did not see those Marines. They were moved off to the side just in time. So this could very well be a shock, but there is an observer at the third base. So yep. Verdi will see it coming up that way. And there's no, uh, there's no super quick third being taken from Verdi or anything like that, which is exactly the kind of thing that Sting would hope that this sort of attack would be able to crush entirely. He's instead going to be poking into the natural expansion. There are a decent number of Zealots, two Stalkers and a couple of ooh, sentries. Guardian Shield going up. He's struggling to be able to defend in this position. That force field really doesn't help him at the moment. But there we go. The Photon Overcharge is going to help quite a lot. Those Marines taking a lot of damage, those two force fields preventing the retreat, the Zealot cleaning it up, and all in all, if we look that there were five workers killed there by Sting. In terms of the lost tab though, relatively similar, only 200 resources different. <coughs> And that actually leaves the worker count being 49 for Verdi to the 41 of Sting. And as such, I've, I'm still feeling that this game fairly equal, too close to call at the time being. And it all comes down to now what is very truly the mid game. So for Verdi, he's getting up his Templar archives now. So going to be going for High Templar. And along with Charge, that's just going to give him some really interesting mid game compositions. Yeah, I, if I had to... Uh hazard a guess really at what Verdi is planning on doing later on in the game. He has a decently small force here to try and prevent any sort of early push, although what Sting has coming across the map at the moment does actually look quite scary. He's also going to try and gear up towards Storm and uh, hopefully some decent uh, Zealot Archon action as well, but long before that actually happens, we're going to see an engagement over here at the natural expansion. Two Metamax in the factory going to try and land to prevent any units from moving by, but unfortunately not able to land in time to get units to block here. Unfortunately, we're seeing Verdi lose an awful lot of his Zealots needed to tank them up, but a couple more are just getting warped in now. And it looks like Verdi is going to be able to hold this off for the time being. The Photon Overcharge definitely helping massively. And now Sting, well, he is just going to be pulling back, making sure that he doesn't take too much damage. Oh, not the Mothership Core, the Mothership yeah, Core is the main base. Oh no, very well there. Very close to losing a decent amount of health, but hanging on in there just enough for that drop to move away. So the sides have reset. Let's take a look at what both sides are at at the moment. 90 to 98 supply in favor of Sting, and the worker supply is 53 to 50, also in our Korean Terran's favor. Now, the work account alone does not tell the whole story. Obviously, mules there for Sting as well means that his income will be quite a bit higher than Verdi's at the moment. But tech-wise, Verdi, he's happily getting out his first High Templar now. He's got Storm on the way, but we see that already Sting getting Ghost in ready to completely counter that. And this is what it's all about. Still in the heart of the swarm, late game composition for Terran is all important in this matchup. The right balance of Vikings and Ghosts. But we see now Sting is moving in, and this is relentless pressure for the moment. It really is. Sting seems to be coming in basically every minute or so, wanting to test to see how well Verdi holds up to the pressure. A couple more Zealots out this time around with Charge as well. But Sting getting himself into an absolutely fantastic position at the wrap and a little, should have really pulled back a bit early for Verdi. Clutch Storm, though, prevents Sting from moving in any further. That storm was really nice. It bought Verdi a little bit of time. It did a good bit of damage to Sting's army as well. And now, this, now there's a good count of High Templar. Now that we're actually seeing Verdi in a comfortable position, Sting really going to have to pull back and just say, I did my best aggressive early game. I did some good damage. And he did indeed. He Over a thousand more resources lost for Verdi so far. But it's all now going to come down to the late game. But the ghost count is already up at five and there's four more in production. 
yeah, and those ghosts are going to be so useful going into late game here from Sting. Verdi, in the meantime, is continuing uh, to mix up these uh, high Templar into his army composition. How many does he have out on the field at the moment? He's got a total of eight. So that's going to come in very, very useful indeed, as long as the Ghosts don't get to the first. One EMP could take out all the High Templar at the moment. He's rushing forward with the Ghost. Will he be able to pick them off? A couple of snipes going off, but no EMPs just yet. As and that Storm! There were some good Storms there. We see that quite a few Ghosts were taken out. A lot of Sting's army actually took a lot of damage there, but the Medivac's going to start healing up. But this pressure from Birdie is now coming for round two. Oh, and here we go, a decent, we need to see a couple of decent EMPs go up. There is one on a lot of the High Templar as well. But the Zealot's getting really good surface area on the bio here at the third base. A lot of medevacs, though, able to heal up. And Sting is going to lift up and continue to defend at his natural good ghost micro there. And as a result, Verdi's going to continue this attack, but slightly weakened. And here we go into the natural Verdi, getting some decent purchase here on our Terran. Now, that pickup and pull back with the medevac boost was absolutely brilliant by Sting. A brilliant, brilliant play. But, of course, Verdi, he is just getting more and more units out. He is getting ever increasingly forward. His supply lead now at 40. And with these warpins, the relentless warpins, and now the push into the natural, this could be very, very tough for Sting to hold with those oh snipes. Oh my god! Those oh snipes my were god. Four ghosts sniping everything there. And I just want to bring back to 30 seconds ago. Uh, Sting actually scanned on top of his ghost to make sure there was no observer there so that he could keep the ghost there for when the army comes in. Sniping pretty much every single High Templar and that was such a good move. Is this enough though to save the game? Those snipes were absolutely incredible but still there are so many zealots there. There's the Immortal, there's the Mothership Core as well ready for the mass to recall if needed. The time warp going down on those ghosts. Storms are hitting each and every which way but it's just the sheer zealot count and just the sheer number of units on the field that I think Sting is going to have the problem with. Oh, and this is a re really good storm, but he just doesn't have enough storms to follow it up with at the moment, simply because of that beautiful ghost micro earlier on, but he instead is just going to be moving in purely with Zealots. Verdi at the moment, looking like he is supremely in command of this game. Army supply 98 to 38, more Zealots being warped in, and he is going to brute force his way through Western Wolf Sting here in game number one.